What's up, YouTube? I haven't been quite as prolific making videos lately as I would like. I've been pretty busy with work and family-related stuff. But I thought I would make a quick one about something I picked up at the thrift store recently. You also might notice that the video resolution and quality is much improved over my previous videos. I did pick up a new camera. This is the Panasonic HC VX 870K, I believe is the model for this camera and it's pretty much better in every aspect than the very outdated uh, low-end camera that I've been using previously so I hope it's a big improvement to you guys but the reason I'm making this video is these Coral brand speakers I had never heard of that company before I purchased these they're the model BX300 they had this rather ominous sticker on both of them or post-it note saying as is so, hey kitty, I was a little bit concerned, but they were $11 out the door, so I took a chance, and much to my surprise, when I got them home and hooked them up, the sound quality on these is really quite remarkable, especially considering the age of these speakers. It looks like they originally were introduced in 1968. I'm not sure the exact age of this set, but I would say it's probably in that range. Only thing defective from the outside was it was missing one of the terminal screws so I just kind of bodged something on there just to test them out but I was very surprised at the sound quality of these speakers they use a I believe a 10 inch Alnico woofer and I know that the Alnico magnets are prone to losing the magnetic charge over time and being a little bit weak but these really have a lot of bass a lot of punch and you would not think that you're listening to speakers conceivably as old as 1968. One other thing I want to draw your attention to is this product literature. It has some very funny mistranslations in it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but kind of skim through it. It is designed to being conscious of the roughness which matches both a European style room and a Japanese style room. The 25 centimeter corn type woofer is adopted as low pass. A 10 centimeter corn type unit is adopted as an inside region. So, some pretty funny mistranslations. I believe corn was supposed to be cone. Um, I believe corn became fawn for the tweeter. Specs are about as dubious as the translation. I think. Um, it says it's like 15 or 16 watts continuous on the back of this speaker. 102 decibels per watt would be some pretty impressively loud speakers. I think the military might be interested in getting their hands on some speakers that loud. But actually the frequency response band, they might be a little bit conservative in that estimate because these speakers do get very deep on the bass side of things. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look inside just to see how they're set up, the quality of the components you use. And I'm also curious about the crossovers. And we'll also take a quick listen to these speakers. Really, they're a little bit rough for the wear, but if they're as old as 1968, they've done a pretty good job making it this far. All right, here's the back of the enclosure removed. I'm not going to take all the drivers out because there's really no need to. Everything is in pretty good shape and in spite of its age has really held up and withstood the test of time and you can see that uh, it's all Alnico magnets and they're actually fairly beefy looking drivers a lot more stout than I would have expected to find in something like this this speaker system sold for 16,800 yen in 1968 which at the 1968 exchange rate would have been equivalent to around 170 US dollars, which in today's money was a fairly tidy sum for a pair of stereo speakers. So these weren't cheap speakers in their day, but they certainly weren't the best. The crossover is pretty basic, as you might expect. It's just two capacitors and a coil. I'm sure most of the viewers watching a video of this type already know about Alnico type speaker magnets. Um, these were the earlier type magnets used before ferrite. You'll notice they're much smaller, but they actually have a, quite a bit more magnetic strength than ferrite type magnets. So don't let the size fool you. These are 
still pretty strong drivers. One feature that at first glance appears to be absent from these BX300 speakers is the base reflex type enclosure. At a casual look you wouldn't find a port anywhere on this box but I believe what they've done is there's actually a gap here. I believe this is the vent here that goes down in front of the woofer. Not a hundred percent and I really don't want to tear into these things any further because they're pretty brittle and I just kind of want to put them back together and give them a listen. But I believe that's how they have the vent set up on this box. All the other drivers are sealed back drivers. So if that is the case, really not a, a bad design I wouldn't think. Kind of clever. Sometimes it can be difficult to hook up your speakers when you've got helpers that are this helpful. Here's my test setup I'll be using to uh, demonstrate these speakers for you guys on YouTube. Obviously this won't be an accurate representation of the sound quality of the speakers because it's going through my camera's mic and then compression so forth but it'll kind of give you an idea I think of the dynamics of these speakers the amplifier I'll be using is this Onkyo I don't think you guys have seen this one on this channel before it's an 8211 TX8211 but it's pretty much the same as the other ones I own the 8511 and the 8522 it's just a lower wattage variant um, a little bit less robust construction but still a pretty nice amplifier overall, about 50 watts per channel and 8 ohms, I believe it's rated. The source is just this Shinbro SR209 case, which has an Acer OEM type motherboard in it. Nothing special, just a little test system I kind of slapped together with parts I had sitting around. It's running Ubuntu Linux. Also, this monitor is new. I picked it up off Craigslist. It's a 27 inch. It was only $50, but I'm really glad I didn't pay any more than that because I would have been bummed out because the construction quality of this monitor, it's manufactured in 2013 and it's really just a cheap, flimsy feeling monitor overall. I know a lot of them are just kind of heading that direction now, but it is a bit of a bummer. Although the picture is excellent, it looks really nice so maybe I don't need to be such a negative Nancy anyways enough chit chat we'll uh, queue up some no copyright sounds music off of YouTube or maybe use the YouTube audio library and give these things a quick listen Here's are a bit heavy on the mid-range region um, when you engage the selective tone control switch on this amp which is basically a loudness control it really makes these things sound like they should by boosting the high and low end a little bit but We'll just take a quick listen. video for now it's already gone on probably a bit longer than it should really not too much interesting to say about these speakers but if you did like the video make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment down below thanks for watching guys